I think marijuana can, can make kids space out and lose their concentration, and I think the only uh, remedy for that is good drug education, especially aimed at young people, about what are appropriate uses of it and what aren't. And I don't think it's a good idea to be stoned in school, for example. Um, but we don't have any real drug education at the moment, because in the present climate, that's impossible. You can't admit that illegal drugs have any positive uses. And all of the educational materials that are used in schools are designed to scare people away from that substance by exaggerating its dangers, and that doesn't work. If you tell a 15-year-old that all these terrible things are going to happen to him or her when they smoke marijuana, and they've already tried it, and they know that it didn't, why should they listen to you when you tell them that crack cocaine might kill them? I wouldn't have if I was 15 and was misinformed like that. I think that kind of education has a very negative effect. I think it enormously stimulates curiosity on the part of young people to try the forbidden substance. Now, I can imagine a few whispers out there. Maybe you think we'll never get drugs under control, that it's too easy for the dealers to get back on the street. Well, those days are over, too. The revolving door just jammed. Some think there won't be room for them in jail. We'll make room. We're almost doubling prison space. Some think there aren't enough prosecutors. We'll hire them with the largest increase in federal prosecutors in history. America is now the country with the highest rate of incarceration. Approximately 20% of criminal convictions are marijuana related. There is no inherent psychopharmacological harmfulness of marijuana which is any way comparable to the harm of arresting more than 400,000 people, mostly young people, for marijuana transgressions every year in this country. We will look back on this era and the response to drugs in this country and think that was worse than what happened in the McCarthy era. It is insanity run amok, and there's not a sane voice in the federal government saying anything about it. All this vigorous prosecution of marijuana, for example, has changed a situation where people grew their own, and usually rather mild marijuana, into a situation where marijuana traffic is dominated by organized crime. The cash crop in California that is the most profitable is marijuana in California. A number of other states also depend heavily upon the production of marijuana. In addition to that, you have the profits made by banks through laundering money. What we are doing in the war on drugs is exactly what the most successful drug kingpins like. We are, in a sense, using government money to keep the small-time opposition out of the business, to keep the prices up and to uh, keep the supply coming from only the most protected uh, sources. Prohibition breeds corruption and breeds, breeds a black market. And we've seen in Australia quite a large number of police officers who have been charged in relation to the supplying of marijuana, and that's the corruption element that's inbred. Lawrence McKinney holds the patent for extracting natural THC from marijuana plants for medical use but the war on drugs has prevented him from using his patent. The major advantages of the drug war to the Justice Department is that the RICO statutes allow them to confiscate and sell anything they can find that's connected to any person who has any uh, large amounts of marijuana. And the result has been such amount of money, over a billion dollars last year, that these drug laws are simply phenomenally profitable to the Justice Department. Fighting a war on drugs is big business now. It is strictly to encourage this um, society of people who can't imagine themselves in another job other than fighting a war and when they run out of wars outside of the country then we're implementing our own military on our own people and it's just gotten totally totally out of hand law enforcement whether they are military or not constantly try to take on more and more of the appearance of military and it's a psychological tactic as much as anything else when this happens to someone, the helicopters will come down and they'll hover and they'll direct troops or there'll be troops traipsing in the woods near your house and your animals will get frightened and your babies will get frightened and you'll get frightened, regardless of whether you're involved in anything illegal. When the walls have begun to crumble, when the laws have begun to burn, when the wind is singing freedom, when the stone begins to turn. Freedom. Freedom.
You have vast amounts of money internationally spent to force other countries to go after their marijuana. Nepal is one of the last countries in the world that had a controlled marijuana uh, marketplace, you might say, that was well controlled by the government. Now, because of the pressure from the United States, they made it illegal. With marijuana suddenly illegal, the trafficking was taken over by criminals. And these criminal smugglers very rapidly began to discover there were things that were more valuable than marijuana to smuggle and infected Nepal and that whole area with you know, heroin smuggling and worse. So it shows you an example of how just with a, a few dollars and a little bit of pressure, the United States can take a regulated, non-harmful situation and turn it into a situation of crimes, victims, money, and extortion and death. The repression of Lebanon's ancient hemp industry occurred recently during the Gulf War at the behest of the US government and Syria's President Assad. Now, we are friends with Assad, and the United States is backing his efforts to wipe out marijuana growers in Lebanon with tanks. That's what we do with our marijuana policies uh, worldwide. The United States drug policy in, in, in Toto affects every country. Eddie Engelsman is head of drug policy for the Dutch government. We think that cannabis use is hazardous. We have a very, I must say, comprehensive anti-smoking policy. But does this harm or this, this risk of getting any harm justify such draconic measures? We think, no, at least our policy should do, shouldn't do more harm than such a drug would do. Every major government study ever publicly funded that studied hemp has come to the conclusion that criminalizing it is a bad methodology. Richard Nixon wanted to really drive the stake through the heart of marijuana, so he appointed a 21-member committee. The Schaefer Commission recommended that marijuana be decriminalized. Nixon just denied the results, rolled right over them. The recent U.S. study, commissioned by conservative California Governor Duke Majin, recommended that adults be allowed to grow marijuana plants for personal use. The embarrassed governor refused to endorse it. It's a similar story in Australia. Since 1970, there have been up to 12 inquiries or royal commissions or parliamentary inquiries into the uh, drug marijuana, and all of those inquiries have recommended decriminalisation, and yet no government has been prepared to uh, stand up and say, well, the inquiries have recommended decriminalisation. We will act on the recommendations of the inquiries. All the surveys show that over 50% of the community accept the use of marijuana, and if that is so, then what you're doing is getting a law that um, is enforcing something that the community doesn't necessarily want enforced. In Holland, the direct problem, the issue, is considered a an issue of health and welfare. So it's not uh, for the police and the courts. One objective of our cannabis policy, if I may say so, not to prosecute people. It is illegal, but to a certain extent tolerated, which has nothing to do with a laissez-faire approach, but we didn't want to push people in the ground. The sale of marijuana is tolerated in many Dutch coffee shops. Nowadays, cannabis users have nothing to do with users using harder drugs. We have integrated uh, education on cannabis in our general health education system in schools. In America, cannabis use is, is, is many times higher than it is in, in Holland. In spite of all the, uh, 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 all the measures and all their wars and all their warning and just say no campaigns. So what is the attraction to marijuana? <laughs> 